Alrighty, I'm at work filming with my uh, potato iPhone, so this might not be the best video. But I'm just doing a quickie, uh, showing you the modifications required to go from the uh, vacuum assist brakes to uh, manual brakes. This is your pivot pin. Well, this is the brake pedal assembly and the upper pivot. And this is the pivot pin here. And this is the piece off the uh, pedal rod that I cut off the uh, vacuum booster. You can see that fits on there and there's a clip that holds that. What normally you press this and it would press that rod into the vacuum booster and actuate the master cylinder. And in the last video I was describing pedal ratio. So basically what I'm going to do is, if you can look over here, you can see that piece is just basically pushed through and then uh, pressed like a rivet. It's hard to do this on my cell phone, but there you go. You can see how it's mushed out. So I'm just going to grind this head of it off, pop it out, and then I'm going to move the uh, hole for it up here. So what that is going to do is it's going to give me better leverage. It's like it's like prying on it with a longer rod, so it'll give me more pedal leverage. But what I'm going, to, what I need to uh, need this for is I'm going to take this, and it's going to, now going to come down, and I'm going to make another piece that'll come off this way with a threaded portion into it, so the threaded rod that comes out of the master cylinder can thread in for adjustment and then it'll have a jam nut set up. So I won't be moving the rod for the master cylinder, I won't be moving it up, I'll just be moving this pivot point up and using a uh, angled adapter piece, I'll still get my leverage on it. I'll just have to make sure that it's pretty beefy, but that's no big deal. But I just wanted to show you real quick what I was doing. Alright, I don't know if you can hear me over the uh, furnace, but a quick uh, two minute job with a two inch uh, grinding disc on my die grinder and I took the whole head off of that. You can see, you can barely make out the outline of that where it's pressed in there. I was actually kind of surprised how soft that metal is. I mean, it just ground away like it was nothing. It's almost like grinding aluminum. So. And this is putting up a fight. Set this up. You can see the outline. Not stiff, but it was loose. You can see where I had my uh, air hammer. I actually trying to drive this out and it did not budge. So my guess is this hole is tapered, it's tapered a little bit, and this piece is still swedged out, so it's not going to let it come out. So I'm probably going to have to grind down into there, or drill it with like a half inch drill bit, before I can take the rest of that swedge off, before I can drive it out. And it is out. Pull it down. What I did is I just heated this up till it was cherry red, or started to turn cherry red. And I drove that pin right out. You can see how far the head of that my uh, straight air hammer bit went into there. That is very very soft metal, which explains if I can focus. As AVE says, focus you fuck. You can see how that is uh, switched out on the end. And I'm willing to bet if you measure that hole, that hole is actually a paper. So it was just a, that's a pretty good mechanical way to keeping that pin anchored. And it's a real simple process. So it just makes removing that pin a bit slow. Not that they ever intended it to be removed. So let's go cool this down and I'll show you what I'm doing. And now that I can actually touch it, see I have the hole left so what I'm going to do is just move this hole and make a second hole up here as far as I can and 
I will just drive this back down in there. You can see when I drove it out, it actually bent. That's how soft that metal is. It actually bent that in. So I'll just oversize the hole a little bit. That's not a big deal. Maybe do some grinding on this to straighten it up a little bit. And then I'll drive it back in there. And then I'll weld it all up on both sides. I weld it on this side down here. And I'll flip it over and I'll put a lot of weld in there. And I won't have any problems with that. So it'll be stronger than it was when it was just pressed in there. Then I just have to paint it. And I can go back on the truck. Then I have to let's see. I have to get the geometry right for this. So I have to just grab a scrap piece of steel and find a uh, rod with the same threads, or uh, excuse me, uh, probably something like a, uh, oh, what's those, I can't, they sell them at the hardware store where you got an eyelet on each end and the, the nut in the center, probably one of those, I'll just weld onto there and brace it up a little bit, so that way I can just turn the nut and have a uh, jam nut on it and I can adjust my pedal. Another thing I need to do is once I get the pedal in and get everything adjusted is I need to come up with a, some mechanical stop because what will happen is when you, when you have the vacuum booster on there, you can't pull the rod out of the vacuum, vacuum booster with the way it's set up. The rod's actually fastened inside the booster. It won't come out. But with this, with the manual master cylinder, if I had this hooked up and I was to pull the rod, I pull the pedal up, I can pull the rod out of the back of the master cylinder. And there's been quite a few instances of uh, race car drivers going down the strip and that rod popping out due to vibration and you, you literally have no pedal. You, you can't apply any brake force at all. So what I'm going to do is create a mechanical stop to keep that so you can't pull the brake pedal up and pull that rod out. It's just a quick little safety measure. Okay, you can see, let me get in here, I'm pumping the mic, you can see where the uh, pedal rod was before. It was pretty much lined up exactly with the, where the stock pedal rod was. I don't know how well you can see this on the camera, but here is the piece that I removed. And if I move it up on the pedal rod, you can see how this piece drops down. And you can see how I'll be getting more leverage. So I just need to get what they call a coupling nut. And I'll, I'll weld it to this, and I'll brace it up a little bit. And then I'll be able to thread it to this rod. Get in there, you can see. This rod is a... Uh, 3 8 by 24 thread fine thread 3 8 so it's kind of a hard to kind of hard to find a uh, coupling nut so I got to order one online so that should be here in a couple days and then I'll go ahead and start mocking that up until then I'm gonna pull this pedal back off and I'm going to mount the uh, here. gonna mount this pin probably up about here now my buddy did it and he did it right about here but I'm thinking I'm gonna mount mine up here I'm not sure I need to do some measuring so but you get the idea okay so I didn't want to wait till yesterday I went ahead and used my drill press Drilled the second hole, moved it up about an inch. So I had to clearance it so it would clear the that where it starts to curve. Now I'm just going to take it to work tomorrow, weld a bead around it, weld a bead over here, and the slap some paint on it. And the pedal rod is 
done. I just need to wait on the uh, coupling nut so I can make the piece that will actually link to the rod and we'll have brakes again. Well, we will when I get the brake lines and the uh, uh, manual adjustable prop valve and I uh, reroute the lines from the master cylinder. So, But that won't take me long. Alrighty, hope you enjoy the video. If you do, click the thumbs up. If you don't, click the thumbs down. Feel free to tell me I'm an idiot down in the comments. Uh, if you like it, click subscribe. Thank you.